Hello there. Today we are going to have a look at slopes and slope processes. We've already had quite a good look at slopes in many ways because of course every topography we've looked at is made up of slopes. So let's just clarify exactly what we mean by a slope. A slope is the part of land between the top of the hill and the bottom of a hill. Simply put, we can break a slope up into slope elements. A slope element would be a part of that slope between the top of the hill and the bottom of the hill that has pretty much the same angle. So for example, when we looked at our crest slope, free face, talus and pediment, we can see that the elements have similar characteristics. So there's a bit of a convex slope in the crest and then the vertical or near vertical free face and then the talus and then the flat or very low gradient pediment. So those would be the slope elements. So slope processes are dependent on what's going on in a particular slope element. Of course the slope itself, the angle of the slope, gives you the energy. We talk about potential energy. So the higher up you go, the more potential energy you have. That means not only because of the altitude, but because of the slope angle. Where the slope angle is, it's more likely that potential energy changes into kinetic energy and things start to move. So let's have a look at the different slope elements. The slope element being something that has pretty much the same characteristics. So this bit here, the crest, the free face, the talus and the pediment all have pretty much the same characteristics. Some books refer to the free face as the cliff. It's not always a cliff, so I prefer free face. Now, right at the top of the slope, you're going to have a little bit of soil. So this is going to be soil, and the edge of that soil will start to feel the influence of that slope. And that means it's going to start to move. And that process, which is very, very slow, is called soil creep. The picture shows blocks of grass-covered soil moving down the crest slope. Then just quickly looking at some of the other processes, we'll come back to them in more detail. This is the free face. Here you've got the influence of gravity really being felt because you've got this huge weight of the mountain. And when you've got a, a face vertically like that, that weight tends to push outwards. And that, of course, is going to cause rocks to joint and bits to fall off, especially near the bottom here. And so you're going to get bits of rock falling off and they end up on the slope as part of the Taylor slope or debris slope. Some of them may bounce further down, but generally that is the case. Then this part of the, of the slope, it's not quite as steep. You're going to get all sorts of things happening and depending on the makeup and the underlying rocks and the amount of rain and the vegetation, all those kind of things. One of the major processes that happens here is a process called slumping where the surface breaks in a rotational fashion like that and under the influence of gravity moves down like that. So you get a slump, a rotational slump. And this is just to illustrate some of the things that are going on. A common process on that constant angle or debris slope. Then down here on the pediment, it tends to be more related to rainfall and sheet wash.